Hello, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, depending on where and when you're joining us in this tutorial. My name is Janet Ossel. I'm a WASH consultant with Food for the Hungry, and on behalf of the WASH and Healthcare Facilities, UNICEF, the World Health Organization, and Food for the Hungry, we wanted to bring you this tutorial on using Kobo Toolbox to conduct the WASH Fit Assessment Tool. Our learning objectives today will be to understand how to use Kobo Toolbox to conduct assessments with the WashFit tool, understand how to modify the WashFit tool in Kobo Toolbox, understand the scoring for different domains and generate a WashFit facility score, and understand how to download the data that you produce. Please note that this is not a tutorial for, on the Wash Fit tool in itself. Um, and there'll be some resources that you'll see at the end of this presentation if you need further assistance with the tool. So for those of you who are familiar with WashFit, there is uh, long been a spreadsheet version and you'll see the link for that on your screen. Um, and what Food for the Hungry has done is also bring alongside a, a Kobo Toolbox version of that WASH spreadsheet. You'll see the WASH fit, the link for that version also on your screen. So which format should you be using? Which format is, is for you and for your organization? Um, and the answer to that is, is not uh, one or the other but what will be most useful for you. So uh, the, the spreadsheet version um, tends to ha have more utilitarian aspects for uh, hard copy collection and going back and, and then entering that data perhaps into a spreadsheet for comparison. Um, and there's, there's definitely uh, good use for that. The Kobo Toolbox version is more intended for electronic data collection and assessment. So it really depends on what functionality you're looking for. We'll discuss a bit more about some of the uh, advantages or disadvantages of Kobo Toolbox as we march through this. So Kobo Toolbox and the spreadsheet version are both easily customizable to culture, context, and language. So indicator definitions can be based on national regulations, best practice, um, and, and specific terms that you might wanna define, such as reliable, available, or regular time period. An example of this would be uh, the indicator that discusses water quality, where water quality is routinely and regularly attested according to standards. If for your team and for your purposes, you could define that much more specifically. So you might say water quality is tested daily according to your country's Ministry of Health regulations, so that you could, you could make that a much more specific and perhaps a bit better defined and quantifiable for your team on the ground. Um, it can also be modified for the situation on the ground, whether you're experiencing some, some um, you know, outbreak, disease outbreak that you wanted to add specific questions around or uh, different, you know, facility issues. Um, in addition, you can also add or remove indicators and customize each of those things. So either the spreadsheet version or the Kobo Toolbox version can be easily modified based on the original WashFit tool. So as a very brief introduction to overall Kobo Toolbox, and some of the nice functionality of, of Kobo Toolbox is that you, there's no need to have an app or a specific software. What you need to do is once you've got your form in place, all you need to do is share that link with your surveyors or enumerators. Uh, they can click the link directly and start working. So data collection is, is also very straightforward. The form does not need to be connected to um, 
uh, cell data. Uh, so it works offline. You're able to collect your form without any internet connection. So it's stored in the cache of your computer or tablet or phone. However, people are choosing to do it. They just open the browser with that link and are able to keep working. When a record has been submitted, it will be added to the queue. That those queues are records are stored inside the browser until they have been uploaded. So in regardless of whether you go online. So you're you're able to once you're back connected to the web page and an internet connection is open, those will automatically upload for you. You're also able to save a draft. So there might be some advantage if you've collected data at one healthcare facility, you go to the next healthcare facility, if you save those as drafts, you can ensure you've answered the same questions the same way without having to um, you know, finalize that record. Maybe you want to go back and say, oh, I've, I've understood this a different way at different facilities and now I want to change my answer. Um, but also remember if you need to, you need to submit those after you've done them, otherwise they won't be uploaded and stored in your file and your records. So let's do a little bit of comparison of how the Kobo toolbox and the Excel spreadsheet uh, compare in terms of just layout and visual. All of the information is identical. You'll just find things in slightly different places. So your indicator is in that first line um, in Kobo Toolbox. Your indicator name is, is the first part and then the actual indicator is right after it. Your category is also laid out just under that. Your explanatory notes are beneath that. And then your, your scoring or your um, criteria. So for fully met or green, um, it's two, for partially met, it's one, and for not met, it's zero. And then your comments section, again, is at the end. In order to fill out the form, uh, it's quite easy. So you just go through and click your answers. Um, there are a couple of additional areas at the end of each um, domain you'll see a general notes section that you might highlight major issues. It's also if there's something that would be helpful to have a photo of that can be taken directly into the form. Uh, and then your scoring auto populates. So there's no need to calculate. Um, it will calculate that for you. And this tells you a little bit about how the scoring is done in Kobo Toolbox. So you can skip questions and the calculation will be based only on the questions answered. So it's not as if, if you skip a question, it doesn't count that question as not met or zero. Um, it will only calculate, the, it will perform the calculation just on the questions that are answered. You'll see the overall facility score is a percentage based on weighting. Um, so met is weighted two, partially met one, not met is, is not at all. So you can read the, the calculation there. Uh, I won't go through it in detail. Also, the JMP scoring is also automatically calculated, but it's only scored based on the questions addressed in JMP. So uh, it's only a, a subsection of all of those, each of those domains. So perhaps you're sold on using Kobo Toolbox for your next project um, or assessments, how would you go about that? So the first thing you do is go to kobotoolbox.org and designate an administrator and sign up for an account. You'll then go and download the Excel version of the, of the survey, not the spreadsheet version. Um, we'll, we'll get into this in a detail, but in a, in a moment, but um, there is a 
a Excel spreadsheet that is the coding for Kobo Toolbox that you'll download from the uh, Washington Healthcare Facilities website. Uh, then you'll have a couple of different places where you can modify uh, the survey before you deploy it. So the first one would be to initially modify that Excel spreadsheet and then upload it to Kobo Toolbox. You can also upload it without modifying it and modify within the Kobo Toolbox form. And we'll talk a lot more about that in a few moments, but as a novice, I found that sometimes it's easier to do each of, each of those options depending on what I'm trying to get done. So first thing is now that you've downloaded the Excel form from the website you and opened your new account, you would go in and simply hit the new button. Then you'll hit the upload um, an XLS form. And if you wanna use it without any modifications at all, you would just hit the deploy or redeploy as it's shown here uh, button. Please note that after any change, you need to always hit the deploy or redeploy. So if you make edits, you'll hit save, and then you always, it's not just enough to save the form again, you also need to redeploy it um, after every change. Then simply hit that open button, or you can copy the link and share it with someone else. Uh, or you can hit the copy button and, and uh, you know, just paste it into a browser. Uh, so also note, none of the people collecting data need a login to collect the data or to submit the data. All they need is the link. Uh, and another note as well is it is helpful to make sure you make all of your modifications before you start collecting data. Uh, Kobo Toolbox will keep track of those, those uh, versions and you can collect different data um, with a different version um, and it will all still download within Excel. However, I believe that will be just a little bit more complicated when you go to clean and sort the data. So if you've now uploaded your, your form into Kobo Toolbox, then you're ready to maybe make some very simple modifications. Those modifications are easiest to do just within the platform, the Kobo Toolbox platform. You can hit that pencil button and that will bring up your form and you can do things like text edits, that sort of thing. If you'd like to modify the Excel file and then go replace the version, you'll need a little bit of deeper understanding of how that coding works or how the form works, um, but it's still fairly straightforward to do. Um, and you would hit that, the, the sort of double arrow uh, boxes right here. So for simple text modifications, this is a screenshot of one of the indicators you can click any of these text areas to modify and go ahead and just change your text. Um, one of the things maybe to note is you can see at this end, there's not a great way that it, uh, to see all your text, it puts it all in a line so you have to scroll over. So it's a little bit clunky, but um, you just need to scroll over to the text you need to modify. If you'd like to reorder or remove, it, remove questions, those are also uh, very easy to do. The order of a question can be changed simply by dragging the box to where you want it. So if you go up to the upper left-hand corner and click on the edge of the box, you can drag it to where you want it. Uh, likewise, you can click the trash can to delete a question. Um, know that if you delete a question, you can't get it back. It will give you an, a message that says, are you sure you want to delete this? Um, and uh, if you don't, 
you know, obviously if you, if you click yes and you didn't mean to, you can not save your changes and go back and do it. But if you've made other changes before you accidentally deleted one, then it's gonna be difficult to get back. Um, adding questions. Uh, there is fairly simple. If you click in the upper left-hand corner of any question, a plus sign shows up. If you click the plus sign, then you'll add a question. You simply type your indicator in that top box. You would click select one. Um, also note before we go on that if you were adding a comment section instead of the select one, you would simply click the text button. And your question will look something like this. You would add your options or for us the met partially met, not met criteria. Add any category and any explanatory notes. And make sure you change this XML value to two, one, or zero. So for us, we've always listed the fully met in the option one box that would be two. Um, and the second one would be partially met in one. And the third one would be not met or zero. This is how Kobo Toolbox knows how to calculate the score. So you need to make sure you change the number to those so that we get the correct scoring. So that all seems fairly simple, right? Um, not entirely uh, in large part because you need to ensure that your scoring is preserved. So, what you'll need to do is click the gear button to see the settings. Then a, your, your question will now look like this. Each data column name has been changed to match the indicator. And if you add a question, it will default to something else. It usually defaults to a piece of text that's in there. Um, so you want to make sure that the data column name is correctly named. And this is also important if you delete a question um, and we'll get to that in a minute. So this isn't a big deal if you reorder the questions and keep all the same questions, you know, perhaps, um, you know, your numbers are maybe out of order, but you've, you've preserved all of the same coding. But if you delete or add, then you need to make sure you fix the scoring. Also know that there's, there's a button here that duplicates a question. Theoretically, you could duplicate a question and then modify it to a new indicator um, because you've got things set up the way you want. Uh, don't do that. It causes issues with uh, presentation and calculation and uh, several other things. So uh, just for uh, a little, saving you a little bit of time, don't think you can shortcut it and duplicate the question. It just doesn't work well. All right, so if you go ahead and delete a question, and we talked about this already, Kobo Toolbox asks you if you want to delete it because you can't undo it. So just make sure that you've, uh, that if, you've if you delete a question, you really want to delete it. If you do really want to delete it, go ahead. We also need to then change that coding so that Kobo Toolbox will uh, correctly calculate your score. The other thing to know is if you delete a question and say, oh, I don't care about the scoring, uh, you'll still need to go ahead and remove that because Kobo Toolbox will not allow you to redeploy your survey if it has coding that it doesn't understand. So you'll need to go in and go ahead and delete the phrase in each of those formulas. So if you look down, you'll see in each domain, you'll see formulas that look somewhat like this. Now these are the water 
domain questions. That's why they're all W underscore what have you. Um, and you'll need to delete the phrase of the question you deleted. So the, in this example, if you deleted question W4, you would remove these areas that are boxed in green. And what you're doing is removing the calculation that says, if this criteria for W4 was met, then value it this way. Um, so you don't need to entirely understand how it's doing it or what the calculation is. Really, you just need to take out the entire phrase from uh, you know, after a plus sign to after the next plus sign um, that's surrounding that indicator that's W4. And know that each one, this top one is for fully met, the next one is for partially met, and the last one is for not met. Then if you add a question, these are sort of the steps you'll follow. Again, you hit the gear setting to see. Um, you'll change the data column name to whatever your indicator number is. Then you'll scroll down to the formula section for that domain, and then add the same calculation to each formula. So essentially the same thing as, as you know, deleting, but in reverse. So for example, if you added question W25 in the first formula, you'd add, you can see that syntax on the screen here. And then similarly in the second and the third formulas, but making sure that you have the same syntax as each of those. So again, you don't have to entirely understand the coding and what everything means, uh, but if you follow the same formula, you'll be okay. Another area that you might wish to change and I wanted to explain is skip logic. Um, so I wanted to give you an example here. Skip logic is where you might ask a question first and then only answer certain indicators based on that first question. So in this example, you're looking at whether you've got a primary healthcare facility or a hospital tertiary care facility and you're only gonna answer certain questions if you've got one or the other. So you'll hit the, the gear button of the indicator that you want to answer or not answer depending on, the, on what kind of healthcare facility it was. You wanna click the skip logic button this time, and then you're gonna set the criteria using any previous question. So if you see this area here, it says, is this a primary healthcare facility or hospital tertiary care facility, which links up to this previous question. There is a drop down in this area that will let you select any of the previous questions in the survey. And then you'll set your criteria. So you wanna only display it if it's a primary healthcare facility. So say you want to add the wash fit assessment tool in a different language. This is one of those areas where I found that it was easier to work back and forth with the, in the, both the Kobo toolbox format and then go and edit in the Excel. Um, again, there are multiple ways often to do these things and you could, I'm sure you could do it one way versus the other. Um, and I'm, I'm simply giving you one way to do it. So the first step would be you would add the language in the Kobo toolbox format. The second step would be to go ahead and download your XLS file. Then you'll open that file and it looks something like this. Now, when you open it, it will look a little goofy because usually the, the column widths are not formatted very well and so that you may only be able to read some of your text. I've tried to make it a little bit more readable here. Um, so you may not be able to see all of these, this text here, but you can see uh, in column C is these indicators and then in column F is the categories and the explanations. Um, so when you 
added that language in the Kobo toolbox form and then downloaded it to Excel, it added these columns for you. And that's where I, I think it's probably one of the easiest ways to do that is in uh, is to then open that Excel file. And you may want to use, you can use Google Translate if it's available for your language and do an automatic translation into those columns. But uh, obviously you need to check them by a, a real live translator because often those uh, Google Translate doesn't understand some of the details. So again, you'd add, so column D would then be your indicators and column F in Spanish would then be your categories and explanations or explanatory notes. Also note that make sure you also add into the translations. I didn't show it a second slide here, but in this tab called choices, um, you also need to do your translation because that's where your criteria, your met, partially met, not met translations will go. Um, and you'll see that if you pull that up, but just make sure you do both of them. So then go ahead and re-upload that XLS form and redeploy the form. And then it should be there and you should be able to, to just select in your survey what language you want to, um, to do it in. So now that you've collected your data, um, what are you gonna do with it? So the first thing you wanna do is click the data tab in Kobo Toolbox and you'll see that it gives you multiple types of data. The tables, reports, gallery will process your data, quote unquote, um, you, but it may or may not interpret things very well. It will take a guess at how you want to do some of the statistics on it and, and some, spit some things at you. So it may be helpful, but it may not be helpful. Uh, so really what you're going to want to do is download your data so you can manipulate it yourself. So what you'll do then is hit export and then your data will show up down in this exports. Note it will keep each file each time you download it, which may be helpful for you for some reason, um, but just know that you can see when that was created. And then if more surveys are collected, you'll need to export it again to get the full data set. And then you'll hit download and then you'll have your data in Excel format. So after data collection, you'll see I put up a little example here of one data point. You'll see the each of the data collection areas is listed in this top row. And then your data point or your healthcare facility will be each listed in subsequent roles, rows. So this is just an example you know, general information. I've hidden a whole bunch of columns because it's uh, so that you can have a, a sense and there's far, far more, you know, far many more columns in here. So here's an example of where the indicator was answered. And then an indicator of how those were tallied. So fully met indicators, partially met, not met indicators the total number of indicators answered, and then the score. And you may end up with some blank columns because it will give you columns for those calculations where there's no actual data collected. So when you do, when you process your data, you may want to do some good cleaning before it's really useful. So you would remove columns that you don't need. You might truncate some uh, labels, those sorts of things. And then the data can be analyzed using any available software, uh, maybe just with Excel, doing tables and graphs in Excel with the data that you have. You could also pull it into a data analytics software. This example here is data that was pulled in um, from into Power BI. 
and was analyzed you know by and you can see then you can get do some mapping and things like that uh, because Kobutil toolbox will automatically also collect uh, if you've got geolocation on it will collect where your survey was taken so some of these things can be pretty helpful uh, one one other note on that is you could also, when you're collecting your data, I'll go back a couple slides here, you could sort this data in Excel if you go back and reassess the same facility a year later. So you could uh, sort it by uh, GPS location or health facility name, and then you'll have the date of collection. So you could monitor these things over time as well, just by sorting your data in Excel after you've downloaded it. So that's really the full tutorial, um, albeit fairly brief. A couple reminders, I know we've said this before, but always redeploy the form after any changes. Note that the same link for the, the survey link stays the same, but you need to remind users to refresh their browser to see, the, to see a new version of the form. We, what we found is that your browser will pull up an old version and after a few minutes, it will say a new version is available. Do you want to refresh your browser? But it is, it's not as quick to recognize that as we'd like. Um, so it's helpful to remind people if there's a new version that they need to refresh their browser to see that. And then also know that there's you can do a lot with Kobo Toolbox. Um, and there is a pretty reasonable help center and community forum if you get stuck with any of your modifications and you, and you don't know how to get something to work. Um, or if you're looking uh, for advice on some of the um, coding and that sort of thing. And then also if you need questions, this is what we talked about at the beginning. There's a lot of good resources and general wash fit guidance at the link shown in the first bullet. And then if you have additional questions or if you'd like to share your experience of using WashFit, there's both an email address or and a contact us um, link at the, the bottom of this page. So again, on behalf of Food for the Hungry, um, Washington Healthcare Facilities, UNICEF, and the World Health Organization, thanks for listening in. And we hope that we've you found this tutorial helpful. Thank you. <laughs>